Hi there everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be showcasing a little bit of the new Lawn Fawn Swish and Pop Pull Tab Interactive Fun. These are all brand new products from the Spring 2021 release that I've used on my car today. It is an incredible release. It is available today. Um, February 25th, 2021. So definitely check that out from your favorite retailers. We're gonna start by stamping images from the Lawn Fawn Bubbles of Joy and Scripty Bubbles Sentiments. There's a little uh, mouse and I think um, also a little bubble wand from there that we're gonna use and some bubbles and things. Um, so two great sentiments. You can use them together or with other your other favorite lawn fawn stamp sets. We're going to stamp our images with Jellyfish No Line Coloring Ink on Bristol Smooth cardstock. And then I have been addicted to using my Tombow markers lately. Um, this was actually filmed before some of the more recent ones I've shared. Uh, I filmed some things out of order, I guess. But anyway, loving them. And I really love the color assortment and things that you get with them. I will say that I think they color maybe a, and blend a little bit better on watercolor cardstock rather than the Bristol. You can get good results. I got good results with this. I was very happy with it. But kind of unlike Zig's, you can't really go over the images if you need to without pilling the paper. Um, I noticed it in a couple spaces and I was able to kind of work around it and fix it. And I definitely will use Bristol cardstock again with them. It's just not going to be quite as forgiving. I also did not incorporate water because these images are pretty small and I just do not feel super comfortable um, grabbing water into these small areas and things like that. I don't really feel like I need to. Drawing the face back in is always going to be really important just because it brings that character back to the image. And these little cuties are darling. I have listed the Tombow dual brush marker colors I'm using across the top of the screen. If at any time you're wondering what color I'm using, you can find that information there. Plus you can also find that information on my blog post that coordinates with this video. I've linked that below in the description underneath the video here on YouTube as well. So that's in a little bit more slow-mo version. One of the things that has really drawn me to pull out my Tombow markers, and in fact, I even bought a few more to fill in some of my collection because I needed neutrals. So all of the, the tans and grays and things you're seeing are new. I did not have those. But what I love is their dual brush, meaning you do have the beautiful brush tip on one side, and then on the other you have a bullet, which is fantastic for drawing back in those tails on the cats. You don't have to worry about using your brush tip and maybe getting the line a little too wide or coloring in those teeny tiny noses on the mice. Little things and details like that, they are just a joy to work with because you can definitely draw that in super easy. And then I really do love the assortment of neutrals that the Tombow markers have. Um, maybe even, I think they're probably a little better than, or a little bit different colors, I guess. I shouldn't say better than, because I love my Zigs. You guys know I love my Zigs. Um, but they're just a little different colors than you get. I almost feel like maybe more muted. Um, so if you want that look, these are a great way to go, and they're very user-friendly. I know I've heard from a lot of you who also have these and have had them for years because I've had some of mine for years as well, and it's just kind of fun to revisit some of our favorite past coloring mediums from time to time. So we're just kind of tracing, and I find I like these for no line coloring. If you kind of are wanting to try no line coloring, um, I know I do it with my zigs a lot, but these are a fantastic option as well. I'm still working on my Copics. I'm not, you know, I don't totally hate how, how my images turn out with my Copics, but I'm still working on getting more comfortable with them. 
I'm just loving watching these mice come together. I hope you guys are too. I love that there's so many different stamp sets that have mice in them. And really, how cute is the, the first mouse that I colored? He is made to work on the large bubble, which is so, so cute. So we're gonna kinda have like these bubbles up in the clouds type of card. We're making a birthday card. Does not have to be birthday. I made it into a birthday card because we are using those scripty bubble sentiments. This could be a thanks card, a love you card, you know, you make me smile card, hugs. Um, if you want to use the bubble sentiments. If you wanna use something completely different, you can do that as well. On a four by five and a quarter inch panel of smooth white Nina cardstock, we're going to blend shaded lilac and blueprint sketch distress oxide inks together. This is one of my all time favorite distress oxide, distress ink, color combinations, either one. I love, love, love these two colors together. And it, this color combination was the inspiration for coloring in the individual bubbles that you're gonna see throughout the card design. So I purposely went to my Tombow dual brush pen color chart that I have, and I, I mark off the colors that um, I own on there. And also, because they don't list the colors on the marker themselves, they just list the number, it's so handy for me. I found this color chart online, and it has the a box to swatch a box with the number and then a box box with the name and it's handy for me to see that all in one glance after i have blended out my background we're going to take the lawn fawn bubble background stencils so there's two different stencils part of this new release and again i want to just reiterate Everything I'm using from Lawn Fawn today as far as stamps and dyes and stencils is brand new. This is the Bubble Background Stencils. It's a two-piece stencil. You can use them together like I'm going to do today or separately. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Yeti White Pigment Ink over my Distress Oxide background. I'm so sorry about the shaking. My camera is clamped to my work table and I'm pouncing this really hard because my Yeti White ink is almost out. I ordered a new refill from Lawn Fawn because it's so bad, but I love the kind of very light bubbly background. I'm gonna take the other stencil, so they're really similar, but it's gonna kind of offset some of those bubbles and we're gonna press that ink into our background again. Hopefully when I get my reinker, I'm it's going to make my pad juicier. I have used this so much. I've men mentioned this in the past, but haven't for a while. If you need a really good white pigment ink, the Lawn Fawn Yeti pigment ink is hands down my favorite white pigment. And there is our bubble background. So, so cute. Now the magic. This is the Lawn Fawn Swish and Pop Pull Tab. So this guide works along the side of your cardstock, whether it's landscape or portrait, and that little bar that is hanging off the side, that is the minimum width it can be from the bottom of the cardstock. You can move it up if you want to or down. And it's going to die cut these little holes across your cardstock, and that is just gonna be for the placement for your swish and pop. Meaning you can choose any of those depending on where you want your element to finish up. Now, part of our element is gonna be this bubble. This is the other bubble stencil I was talking about. It's the Lawn Fawn Bubbles stencil. And you can kind of build a whole bunch of different bubbles with this, um, create some really unique backgrounds. But this particular bubble here, there's a bubble set. There's the open bubble and then um, a little highlight. And I did it in a couple of different color combinations. I didn't like my original color combination, so we're using the same colors as our background, but I did not re-ink my blender brushes. That bubble from the stencil lines up with the die for our stamp set. So the bubbles of joy. There's a stamp in there, or you can stencil it, or you can use them together, or you can use it without. It's so awesome. 
So I used that to ink up this bubble because I really want everything to coordinate. I'm using very minimal markers, really, compared to many of my projects today. In fact, I'm going to look here really quick. One, two, three. Eight total is all I used. So a lot of neutrals and then two colors, which is the blue and the, the lilac. We're going to glue our little mouse onto our bubble. And I know it's already assembled here. Just hang tight with me. Um, it's because I had to... I inserted this because I did change my bubble color. We're going to take it on back and we're going to put our pop and swish together so you can see how that's going to work. I know I've already attached him here. I wanted you to see him moving. Just checking that to make sure that the the interactive element is working correctly. Um, and it is, and I think it's going to be fantastic. And I noticed I got a little smudge on my bubble, but I think that's going to be okay because I'm going to add another element on top of that in a little bit. It's also, if that happens and you don't want to redo it, it's a great way to fix that. Okay, let's head on back. Let's put our pop and swish together. So this funny little bar here is great die cut out of acetate. This is going to be the element that the mouse on the balloon that's going to be on the acetate bar that actually moves. You want to put this little bar, and this was die cut from Lawn Fawn Acetate, which is nice heavyweight acetate. You want to have it kind of in your hand like this. This is the way it goes. The curved edge goes towards your right or your right hand, if that makes sense. And then this long bar is the interactive pull tab. You need two little mini brads for this. I have some from my stash. We're going to connect the pull tab bar to the arm that moves. That's going to be in the outer hole. And then that inner one on the arm, that can be put through any of those little holes there on our cardstock. So that's just going to determine where our little guy's going to finish up on our card. I put him in one of the outer ones or maybe the very outermost one. I'm sorry, I'll put it back here in a second and we'll see. Um, so that he moves really far. If you put him on one of those holes closer to the left side, it's not gonna move as much. And it's really just kind of up to you and up to whatever story you're wanting to tell. So I put it in the second one in and it still gets a ton of movement. Now we need something to hide our interactive element. And in this case, I'm gonna use the brand new bubble border die. Why would we not? Everything on our card is bubble themed. So we are going to do this great little bubble border. I'm gonna die cut the border itself. It's a two piece die from Smooth White Cardstock. That's gonna go along the bottom of our card. And then there's another die in this same set that is the bubbles. Again, they can be used together or used separately. This could even be clouds if you wanted it to and you don't want to use the bubble uh, border itself. We're going to die cut then the bubble border from Lawn Fawn Prolescent Cardstock and layer that right on the white border. I'm testing this little pop and swish arm. I want to make sure that nothing funny is going to show when it's moving or anything like that. I wanna make sure it's hiding all of the interactive part of the elements. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a little double-sided adhesive on this clear acetate arm. I am leaving both the pull tab and the arm long for now in case I need to change anything. They are both purposely made long so that they work with many different kind of designs and depending again where you want that element to finish it it's super easy I didn't really measure anything out other than kind of figuring out where I want him to end and from there I'm going to fill in with the rest of my elements so I did trim off the rest of that acetate I know um, Kelly at Lawn Fawn did mention that maybe you want to leave that until the end in case you want to move it up or down and I think that's such a good tip I had not uh heard that until I'd after I had already filmed my card and I just thought it was a really great idea. 
So I did die cut the pearlescent bubble border, the pearlescent vellum bubble border, and it's vellum, so it's gonna be tricky to adhere. And I decided to run it through my Xyron sticker maker, making the entire background sticky. I'm just gonna smooth that out a little bit. And then we're gonna just pull that off of the backing paper and pop that in place right here on our border. Now, mine did kind of pop apart right there at one of those score lines, but I'm just gonna piece her back together, that's okay. And it is a little longer than my border. I'd already trimmed my border down to um, five and a quarter inches wide there so it matches my background. And then once that's in place, I can just trim off that excess. Now I want to do any layering now because we need to make the notch for our pull tab that moves our interactive swish and pop. So I'm just snipping off that excess there. That is looking cute. I cannot wait to see this come together. So now we need to line up this tab. And you'll notice that the tab die from the Swish and Pop has a couple of little arrows. I like to kind of lay this out on a grid background because it helps me line it up. So I lined my arm up straight. I'm gonna lay my border right on top of that. And then I want to take my die and line up those two notches so that they are on either side of the pull tab and then I'll run my border through the die cutting machine and that's going to die cut the border so that it gives you a great place to grab that pull tab and to pull it to move the element. So I'm just holding it in place right now. Again, I like to double check things a lot. You're gonna notice that whenever I'm doing an interactive card, I'm generally checking over and over because there is nothing worse than getting almost to the finish line and realizing you have messed up something. Now, some of that Xyron sticker maker, I noticed a few little stickery goobers. I'm just taking a sand eraser and getting rid of those. Before we attach our border and hide the interactive element, we wanna color in the rest of those elements that we need to complete our scene. So that's gonna be the happy from the scripty bubble sentiments. It's gonna be some individual bubbles from both bubbles of joy and scripty bubble sentiments, um, a bubble wand, some little heart bubbles, all that good stuff. And I'm going to color anything that's a bubble with my 533 Peacock Blue and 620 Lilac uh, Tombow Dual Brush Markers. We're also using the blender to blend that color out on our bubbles. And I had to work a little bit on the title to pull, I pulled the color up and it's just a little bit lighter at the top than I'd really like. I want a little more definition. I don't necessarily wanna see the jellyfish ink from stamping this outline, I want to see a bubble, kind of quote unquote a bubble. And so I will work a little bit to kind of pull that color up, you'll notice. I did leave the coloring in so you can watch the progression of this, but it's a really pretty ombre effect. Then we're gonna die cut everything. Lots of checks and balances with this particular project. I did not commit to adhering pretty much anything until I had quite a bit of those little finishing things done. I will say the only thing that I did not do ahead of time, and that was simply because I just wasn't exactly sure how everything was gonna fall, are like the little pops of balloons and then the little pop pop words from the balloons that have popped. But you're gonna notice that I'm gonna stamp the phrase birthday to you from the scripty sentiment, the scripty bubble sentiments stamp set. I am going to stamp that on my background. I did lay out some of the elements to get an idea, 
But my background is completely dry now and I am going to stamp that phrase and heat emboss it with white embossing powder. If at all possible, I try to do any stamping and embossing before I attach images, especially with something like this where there's so many images. In case the embossing powder flakes would get stuck around the die cuts. So it's really nice. It's a little extra work because I generally have to lay it all out and make sure that the, you know, kind of layout works. But it's worth it because I'm not worried about those stray embossing powder flakes. In this case, the only thing we have attached is the pop and swish interactive element. So we've got the birthday to you phrase. That's the only thing on the background for now. We're going to set that down here and play around with a few additional images. Also, another little tip from Lawn Fawn is I die cut another solid bubble image just from white cardstock. You don't have to make sure it's colored or anything like that. I die cut an additional circle and I'm backing it, kind of sandwiching it. I didn't do the mouse, but you could do the mouse if you wanted to too. But it makes that little pop and swish element a little bit more stable and smooth so that when it slides back behind the border, it slides a little bit better. Um, I do think it helps for what it's worth. So it's just a great little way to kind of help your interactive card work great. Another thing that Lawn Fawn suggests is doubling up your foam adhesive. I'm going to start just with the little foam adhesive a along the bottom because this is your stopper. And now if you want your stopper to be a little bit higher, move a little piece of foam adhesive up so that it stops where that guy is going to finish. But I'm doubling up. This is pretty thin foam adhesive. And I'm just doubling it up here and you can see it's gonna bump against that and that's kind of your stopper so it doesn't keep on going. Let's go ahead and pull off our backing paper, but before I attach my border, I do wanna stamp a phrase along that bottom edge, and so I need to do that before I attach it to my card because it's so hard to do afterwards. In this case, we're using may your day be filled with, or may be filled dot, dot, dot. That is from Bubbles of Joy, so I'm combining sentiments from my two stamp sets, and we're going to stamp this with the Moonstone Lawn Fawn ink, which I absolutely love. And again, it coordinates beautifully with the theme and the design of our card. We're gonna ink that, and just stamp it right there along the bottom edge. Now there wasn't actually a little dot, dot, dot behind this phrase, but I want it to be continued inside the card. So I'm taking another phrase from Bubbles of Joy and we're simply going to mask off the part we're not gonna use. We're just gonna line up the little dot, dot, dot. You could also draw in dot, 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 especially if you were um, stamping in black. It would I would have just used a pen, but I don't have a pen in this particular color. Although probably one of the, the bullet points of a Tombow dual brush pen would have worked um, this and would have been a little quicker, but I just used the little dot, dot, dot from another phrase. And there is our cutie little border that we can now attach to our card hiding the pop and swish mechanism. So I'm just gonna line this up And then you can see that it's going to work perfect and it's going to hide him back behind the border. Now I should have put a little piece of adhesive doubled up underneath the top part because I don't want my arm sliding all over the place. I need it to stop somewhere. So I am going to hide some little foam adhesive right there. So 
So that looks like that's going to work pretty good. And now we can start adhering some of the rest of those elements. So adding in the happy, so it reads happy birthday to you. May all your, may your day be filled. And then we'll finish the inside, the rest of that greeting on the inside of the card. And I like to just, I kept double checking the whole time to make sure that this was going to slide. And you guys, I'm so amazed. It slides effortlessly. So it works really great. I will say I used acrylic blocks. I'm gluing everything down with liquid glue and I wanna make sure it's really good and flat because that's gonna aid in helping the pop and swish move. So I went ahead and I'm just putting these acrylic blocks on top. They're nice and heavy. They're gonna hold everything down. And that's gonna go for every little bit because I want it to be as flat as possible. Now this little guy who's standing in the bubbles, blowing bubbles, the bubbles are right on the background. We'll come back to him, I think. Um, and then we've got a little guy down here by our sentiment. We've got a cutie sitting in a bubble. He's gonna be over here along the right side of the card. And then the guy holding the bubble wand, we just need to make sure that he is only glued down to our bubble border. And we don't want to have the bubble wand or anything glued in place because we want that to free the, the pop and swish bubble to freely move. Our little mouse, a little baby mouse, he's standing on top of the happy bubble. And then he's reaching for, he'll be reaching for another little bubble. We'll have that here in a second. To help the mouse here on the left side, you notice I have him attached with tweezers. I only put glue on the bottom and I'm gonna use those tweezers to kind of pinch that together, hold him in place, and make sure we have a really good secure bond. And then we've got our cute little guy over here. I think he's darling. And he's glued to the right side. So here's that bubble wand. I did stamp it early on. I just kind of forgot. I did a couple different options and I think we're gonna use this one. I really like that one. Um, and we'll just color that in and die cut that really quick. I kept adding. This is one of those cards I kept adding to I felt like we needed all the bubbles, all the little things, because the finishing touches, as you guys know, and how my philosophy is the finishing touches make the card. I love how this little guy looks like he's like blowing bubbles, and then he's also reaching out for them, this one that I'm putting down here by the sentiment. Um, this other sitting mouse, so he, I haven't attached him quite yet, but I'm gonna attach him along that top edge of the bubble border as well. So he's only gonna be attached right there along the bottom. The rest of him is going to be free. There's no foam adhesive or anything so that again, the pop and swish can move behind it. I'm gonna pinch that bubble wand to the mouse with my tweezers so that that will stay in place because that his little hand is the only place that element is secured. And then let's see here. This is the little pull tab element from the pop and swish. It comes with the die set. I die cut that from some Lawn Fawn Moonstone cardstock and we're going to secure that to our card. So in the clear open position, you can trim that flush with the side of your background. And then I'm gonna pull it back out. So we're hiding the mouse that's in the furthest position out. And we're going to just pinch that little tab in place that helps the recipient know that, hey, this card does something And the tweezers are again going to help hold that nice and flat because I did use liquid glue. 
and it's just going to make it very nice and secure. My tweezers are one of my best crafty friends. They get used, I think, on every single project. Okay, so it's looking cute, but it definitely needs a few additional elements. This is that mouse I was talking about. He almost hides the clear arm a bit. Um, his position is right when it's in the open position, it kind of helps disguise it. And then that little smudge on my balloon, I, it didn't bother me a ton, but if we can disguise it, let's do that. We're gonna disguise it with some little heart bubbles. Did I call it balloon a minute ago? You guys, it's been a week. Bubble, if I did, I meant bubble. And then we're gonna put some more little bubbles. I like a lot of different sizes of bubbles. So we got these little itty bitty baby bubbles around and then some little bigger ones. And then of course the big one that the uh, there's a mouse inside of and then the moving one. As well as the bubble border. Bubbles, bubbles everywhere. On the inside of the card, we are going to stamp the rest of our sentiment. So the rest of our phrase is with bursts of joy. May your day be filled with bursts of joy. I think it works really nicely with the birthday sentiment. But again, this is a sentiment that doesn't have the little dot, dot, dot before it. So I'm going to take that same sentiment that I used before and we're just gonna piecemeal it together so it looks seamless. I'm actually gonna put that on the stamp. I'm just using a scrap piece of post-it tape that's been well used to cover up the rest of that sentiment so it doesn't ink up. And that is perfect. And I know I did this upside down, but I did it upside down when I did it. But I love how it coordinates. I like the colors all coordinate. I like that there's nothing harsh and dark. There's no black on here. Everything are these beautiful soft um, or beautiful blues and lavenders and then all the, the whites of the bubbles. So this is our side fold card base and our background is four by five and a quarter, which is gonna leave us with a really nice white border all the way around. You definitely don't have to. Um, you can do the pop and swish on a full size A2 card if you want. You don't, um, it doesn't have to be smaller like I did here. I just wanted to have that nice white border all the way around my card design. And then we want to glue our remaining little teeny tiny elements. So remember a minute ago when I glued that little itty bitty mouse on top of Happy, I said he's reaching for a little bubble. There's the bubble he's reaching for. We're gonna have a couple more up here. And just the addition of these little extra bubble pieces make a world of difference, in my opinion. Um, I love that it just kind of ties it all together. It makes this really full, sweet little scene. And then we do want to add the little balloon pops. And I'm going to use pops from both of Scripty Bubble Sentiments and Bubbles of Joy because there's, um, I think, about three different sizes and I wanted all of those represented. And then we wanna do the little pop pop words because I think that's fun as well. With balloons, we've got lots of pops and I think this is just one of those things that rounds out and finishes off the scene beautifully. We're gonna add some of those little pop, popped bubbles and then the word pop pop these are those finishing touches that I always think complete a card. It's so super cute the way it is, but we've got to have some popped bubbles with all of these little full bubbles and all the bubbles that the mice are blowing and hanging out on or in. going to get those positioned. I'm going to use a little powder tool here to kind of help hopefully keep our embossing powder just on those stamped images. We'll tap on a little bit of embossing powder, just tapping that off. And then heat emboss. 
And then I did add one additional word pop up there to finish it off. And that is going to complete our card. So once I have that stamped, I'm just going to show you in real time the movement of this super fun bubble themed pop and swish interactive card. I just love all of these interactive elements that Lawn Fawn comes out with and everything on this card, stamps, dies, and stencils are brand new products from the spring 2021 Lawn Fawn release. Please be sure to visit Simon Says Stamp for the full Lawn Fawn release. You guys are going to love the products. The supplies I use to create my card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Lawn Fawn products that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new card making video. Definitely leave me a note and let me know what other new Lawn Fawn products you'd like to see in an upcoming video here on my channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.